we are studying gear trains we have gone through the simple gear train compound gear train reverted and epicyclic gear train now in this lecture we will study the analysis of epicyclic gear trains since epicyclic gear train constitute complex motions a standard method called as tabular method or superposition method is used for the analysis of epicyclic gear train now to study the tabular method let us take an example of the epicyclic gear train shown in the figure here okay we are taking an example of a very simple example or to study the tabular method the very first step is to draw the table table will have number of columns equals to the number of members in your gear train plus one column is required for writing the steps number of rows are equal to 3 plus 1 4 first row will be used to list the name of the members second row is for step number 1 first uh, third row is for step number 2 and fourth row is for step number 3 so let us uh, draw this table first column is always reserved for the steps second column is always reserved for the planet carrier in this case planet carrier is arm c so it will come in column number two column number three is reserved for the input gear to which we will apply the motion in step number two okay and the subsequent columns will be for the remaining members okay in this case you have to be careful while deciding the columns for the gear members i have a first column is always for the steps second is always for the planet carrier third is always for input gear now i have taken gear p in fourth column because gear s is in mesh with gear p so it will follow the gear s and gear p is in mesh with gear a so it will follow the gear p now what is step number one in step number one we will consider that all the gears are locked to the planet carrier or arm c and we will allow the arm to rotate with y number of revolutions in some direction okay and under such condition we will tabulate the speeds of all components okay now what i have done step one all the gears are fixed to the arm and arm will rotate by y revolutions now since all the gears are fixed to the arm they will rotate with the speed of arm so under this condition the speed of all the members will be y revolutions okay the speeds of all the members under this condition are tabulated in row 1 now step 2 in step 2 we will free all the constraint in step 1 and now we will fix the arm and allow some gear to rotate with x number of revolutions what we have done now we have freed all the constraints in step one i fix the arm and allow the sun gear s to rotate about uh, rotate with x number of revolutions okay so step number two arm fixed sun gear rotates with x number of revolutions so speed of arm is 0, sun gear speed is x. Now we will tabulate the speeds of gears P and A under this condition. So let us find out the speed of gear P. S is in mesh with P, so S drives gear P. Okay, you can see from the diagram, sun gear S drives planet gear P. So velocity ratio will be the ratio of speed of input gear to the speed of output gear or ratio of speed of driving gear to the speed of driven gear and this is equals to the inverse ratio of number of ticks we know that so ns upon np will be equals to tp upon ts we want to determine np speed of gear p so np is taken to the left hand side and all other remaining terms to the right hand side okay 
all other remaining terms to the right hand side. Now ns is x, we know that speed of sun gear is x. So let us substitute x for ns. Okay. Next we will introduce negative sign here because gear s drives gear p in opposite direction since they are in external mesh with each other. So to indicate the opposite direction of rotation we have used negative sign for gear ratio or speed ratio. Okay, now this is the speed of gear P. Let us put the value of this speed in the table. So this is my NP. Now next let us find out the speed of gear A. Okay. Speed of gear A. We will find out the speed of gear A. Okay, now find out the speed of gear A. Now to find out the speed of gear A, we know that A is in mesh with gear P. So P drives A. So we can write down the equation for velocity ratio. Speed of driving gear NP divided by speed of driven gear NA, which is equals to the inverse ratio of number of treats, TA upon TP. So we want to find out Na, speed of gear A. So Na is equals to Np into Tp upon Ta. Now we know the value of Np under this condition. Np is minus x into Ts upon Tp. So we have substituted minus x into Ts upon Tp for Np. Now P drives A in the same direction. So we will not use negative sign here for the gear ratio. So this is the speed of gear A. So let us tabulate that speed in the table. Now after this in step 3 we add the motions in step 1 and step 2 to get the total motion of all the gears about the axis of gear train. So speed of planet carrier that is arm C will be NC is equals to Y. Speed of sun gear is NS which will be equals to X plus Y. Speed of planet gears is y minus x into Ts upon Tp and speed of gear A is y minus x into Ts upon Ta. Now there are four members. We have four equations with us to find out the speed of those four members. But there are two imaginary terms in these four equations x and y. So in order to solve these four equations we have to determine the values of x and y first. Now to find out the values of x and y we make use of the input velocities which are known to us. Since if it's like a gear train, uh, two degrees of freedom train, velocities of two members will be always known to us. So using those two values we can solve any two applicable equations and determine the values of x and y and then solve the equations to find out the speeds of unknown members. Okay.